what you want, when you want it, where you want it. This is The Mesh. This is a previously recorded episode of Making Living Better on WHKY, Catawba County, North Carolina's radio source for first-person storytelling. Welcome back to First Talk with Hal Rowe on WHKY Talk Radio for the Greater Hickory Metro. Time for another installment of our Making Living Better segment. Joining us this morning is Marietta Burke. She is a Newton resident. Uh, she has uh, her own stained glass shop, Bella Bear. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. It's wonderful to be here. There's a lot to talk about this morning, but I always like finding out about the people who I'm uh, speaking with. But first, I want to find out about Bella Bear because are you, where are you located in Newton? I'm located across from the Catawba County History Museum, which is the old courthouse. Right. I'm in between BB&T and Blue Moon Restaurant. I'm a single building right there. So you are right downtown. Oh, right downtown, right there. You know, great seats for the parade. We can watch it from, right. <laughs> from the top. Right, exactly. yes. Now, uh, the, uh, 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 by the way, the Blue Moon, eaten there before, good stuff. Yeah, it's great, great yeah. restaurant. So you yeah. are right at the right place. So yeah. tell me about your shop because, uh, as a, you know, they have a little, uh, they give me this information before we have our guests come in. Yeah. And I see that you're a stained glass architect, which I think it's very cool. Yeah. Tell me about your shop, Mel Well, I started about five years ago. Um, I'd always been interested in stained glass and things like that, and my husband and I were having our third child, and he ran his business out of our house, and I said, "This, you got to get a building. I said, uh, <laughs> we can't give up a bedroom for an office because the kids sharing rooms that just, oh, <laughs> 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 they fight already. So um, he had purchased this building in downtown Newton, and the lady who was in the bottom part was leaving, and he said, well, why don't, why don't you start a stained glass store down here and, you know, do, do your stuff instead of our garage? So, um, I said, how wonderful. So I did, and I really just started it as a hobby and, you know, something to keep me busy and to do and to make pieces. But, I mean, it turned into a full-fledged business. Did not expect that. Right. I'm booked for months at a time and working on, you know, five, between five to ten pieces at, at once. Wow. Yeah. So now he bought the building. He did, yeah. You, so you all have bought a building in downtown Newton. Yep. Right there on the square. Yeah. So you are heavily invested, invested in. Yes. It, it, right? yes. Mm-hmm. So you got to be real happy because we've had Mayor Stedman on the air before. Yeah. And you've got to be really happy with a lot of the things that are happening oh, in Newton right now. And just, I mean, just recently, really good news mm-hmm. for Newton and downtown Newton. So a lot of good things happening for you. Yeah, the streetscape plan, um, they've started working on that. Um, a lot of great changes are going on. We have downtown development with the business owners and things. It's a lot of support, a great town. Um, I'm really, really happy we chose to be there. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've talked about this before because we with uh, 16 coming up from yeah. Charlotte. You're going to have Charlotte. Mm-hmm. You're going to have some transitional, probably house. And then if you want to have uh, a, a more uh, a laid-back community, yeah. come right up to Newton. You've got yeah. some beautiful homes there if you exactly. want to. You're not looking for new housing. You've got some established housing up there in Newton. Mm-hmm. So you've got a thriving business yeah. on the square mm-hmm. in Newton. Yeah. That's great news for everybody in Catawba County, right? As an artist, too, which you don't think, you know, starving artist is always what you hear. But, I mean, it's, it's been good for me. And you have you are kind of, if I'm not mistaken here, from the information I received and, and from what I've heard, you're kind of getting a, a name, not just in our area, but regionally, right? I mean, and, and yes. in the South. Right, in I mean, the you south. got new people coming from like Atlanta and stuff to see your work and to talk to you about that. Is exactly, that right? yes. And um, one of my little pieces, it's it's a little it's a little camper, and it was so cute. And I made it for a friend, and then I thought, well, I'll put it up on on my online store and see what happens. I really didn't think it's my most popular piece at this point. It's just a little uh, about forty five dollars, a little camper, and it comes in different colors. It was featured in Our State Magazine and oh, wow. and Country Living. So, wow. yeah. wow. and and people said, well, how did how did you, how did that happen? And I said, they found it on Etsy. I said, I wish I could take credit for that, but they, they found it and said, well, can we feature it? And I just sent the pictures. So, How yeah, nice is that? Yeah, I said, oh, okay. So the next thing you know, you got some orders rolling in. Some so orders, you're talking yeah. about like a little camper that you drive? That it, you... It's a little stained glass camper. Okay. It's just, um, it looks like, you know, a, a pole behind camper right. and then it has the, it has the, um, the car lot, you know, the banner on it where it has different colors sure, going yeah, across yeah, and it has yeah. curtains and a little window. Oh, neat. It's, it's very cute. Yeah. And so people like it. About oh, camper, like it. people who own camper. And if somebody's maybe buying a camper or they've got a camper, great gift for it's them. It's a great thing. And just recently, this past week, I did a, I did a piece for chiropractic office in 
in Oregon. Yeah, they found me on the internet and said, "Well, can you make this?" And it was a full, it was a full size skeleton. I know your your um, listeners cannot see it, but I will show it to you. Um, but it is just forward it to me on Twitter, and I will. Oh, you, wow, yeah. very cool. And I see now because our listeners cannot, we're going to have to um, tweet this out. Okay. So you tweet it, uh, t- uh, give it, shoot it to me, and I'll tweet it out so our listeners can okay. see it. That's and that's for a chiropractic office. A chiropractic office. Yeah. That's big. That's a big work. How big is that work that it, you just? It's about 24 inches by 14 inches wide, um, and they're going to put it in the front window of their office. So, yeah. Do you remember your very first work that you said, I'm really proud of this. This is this is cool because I think that whatever we're doing, yeah. you know, whether that's, you know, your first broadcast, whether it's your first piece of furniture, mm-hmm. whatever it is, I think that there's one that we kind of go, wow, that really works for me. Do you remember what it was? It was my very first customer that came in. Her name is Vicki Hendricks, and she came in and wanted a stained glass window for her kitchen, a kitchen cabinet. She was redoing the whole kitchen. It was beautiful. Um, she wanted dogwood blossoms within this piece, so I made it, and she loved it, and still to this day, I mean, we keep in touch, and she's just, she loves that piece. She's so proud of it. And, and, yeah. and that's the one that you said, yes, I can do this, and yes, I can create something that I, that I yeah. like, and that, that, that's good. And this is a good thing for me. It is, and it was it was really complicated from what I had made before, because before I was making like little sun catchers for friends and family, things like that, and she said, well, you know, can you make this? And I said, well, I mean, I think I can make anything with the right tools, right. <laughs> you know, time. So, so um, I made it, and it had, like, little blossoms within the glass. And I mean, it was a difficult piece, but I um, got it finished for her, and she was so happy. So oftentimes yeah. we, we get started when we're very young at, at these mm-hmm. type of pursuits. Tell me what got you interested in stained glass when you were – now, you're from the area. From what, the area, right. yes. And, and your granddad, you're yeah. from Catawba, right? Yeah, from Catawba. And yeah. we talked about Ham Day. Ham Day. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, yes, I've been to Ham My first one was this last year, oh, and I gosh. loved it. Ham Day is a, tra- a Catawba tradition. <laughs> it really is. And for people who don't know about Ham Day, it's a Masonic Lodge, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you go up there, and then, man, see, I went for the breakfast portion. Yeah. I figured I'd get there early. There wouldn't be a big line. Good luck on that. <laughs> she just gave me a look like, good luck on that. But uh, it, yeah. it's, a, it's a one because you got a delicious country ham, yeah. and you got a big breakfast. It's a great fundraiser for the area. Mm-hmm. But you meet everybody. You meet everybody. I mean, it's a social gathering. It it's, is. You know, you see all your neighbors, friends, family, everything. So it's it, you've got to go to ham day. you got to go to ham day. <laughs> yeah. And I am a big, uh, I'm a big supporter now of ham day. When it mm-hmm. comes around next year, I'm going to tell people, get the tickets, go to ham yeah. day, and if nothing else, see it and enjoy a great breakfast and, mm-hmm. and support a, a great fo- a group of folks up there. But yeah. your granddad, uh, you grew up in Catawba. I did. You went to ham day, but your granddad was a, uh, a cattle farmer. He right? was a cattle farmer. Um, it, the farm's still in the family today. All the land that was connected with the farm um, went to my two uncles, aunts, and mother. So, I mean, they've, they're not selling it. So, I mean, they've, they've kept it in the family. And it's, um, some of it's farmed for, I think, soybeans and corn still for right. a local farmer. Um, so, all that's still in the family. Still in the family. Yeah. Good. Now, how about your husband? Is he from the area as well? He, oh, he's from Lincolnton. Okay. But Lincoln. he, does, he does have family in Newton. Okay. Um, they, um, his family has Christian tours. Oh, really? So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So, how'd y'all meet? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's kind of an odd story. So, I was on my way to the mall in Hickory one day, and I drove up to the stoplight and looked over, noticed the driver. He looked at me, and I thought, oh, well, he's, you know, he's kind of cute. Kind of cute. So, <laughs> I drove on into the mall, and this was in broad daylight. It wasn't, you know, <laughs> right. you know, but he right. followed me over, and we started talking in the parking lot and talked for about an hour and had our first really? date. Really? First date three days later, um, and we got got married about six or seven months later. We've been together 15 years. 15, well, that's years. just yeah. a great yeah. story. Yeah. Just saw each other in traffic. Yeah, we did. We met at a stoplight. Yeah. That is great. Love at first sight. Yeah, yeah, it really you was. Because obviously he thought maybe you were attractive. You yeah. thought he was kind of cute. You pull over and you have a chat. Yeah. And, and, and you've been together this, and you're married. Married. And three kids. Three kids. Yes. And you've been together 15 years. Yeah. Oh, I think that's just a. Wonderful. And we work in the same building, so I mean we, we get we get along pretty well. I would say that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. It's not like you know, I'm going to work. I'll no. see you later. No, I'm tired of you. <laughs> Go to work. Yeah. Um, so uh, you, you grew up in Catawba. Mm-hmm. You uh, decided that this is something that uh, that you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And, and and when did you start working actually with stained glass? Is this something that you maybe got a, a kit for a toy or something like I that? I did. I started doing it with um, in high school and things like that. But this was not in the age of you know high speed internet or I think internet had just been just come around when I was you know high school junior or senior. So it wasn't like there were YouTube tutorials on how to do this. Right. You can only learn 
learned so much from a VHS tape and a book. So well, that um, was it, a VHS uh, tape and yeah, a book. Okay. It was. That's that's what I started doing things with, and um, and then when my husband and I got married, there was a stained glass artist in Cornelius who had a shop and offered offered lessons because we lived in Terrell at the time. Okay. So. I went there, and he was a retired engineer, and I'd had the background in architecture. So, I mean, we we spoke the same same language, pretty much. Right. So it was very easy to learn from him, and he showed us how to support the piece and put it together right. So he really showed me how to make it the correct I want to talk a little bit about stained glass and about the architecture aspect as well mm -hmm. when we return. More from our guest, Marietta Burke, this morning. Uh, this is the Making Living Better segment that we do uh, with Catawba County. Uh, she is the owner of Bella Vare, and if you'll be lucky if you can get me things, because she's busy. More first talk right after this. Catawba County, come, come to Catawba County, making living better. Come to Catawba County, there's everything from a historical size higher education. Take a show through Murray's Mill or walk through Bunker Hill Cover Bridge. While you're at it, schedule a tour of Lenore Ryan University or Catawba Valley Community College. You can even enjoy a nice baseball game with Hickory Crawdads. If you're looking for a job, Catawba County is the place to come. You might know some of our corporations here like Apple or Comscope. Also, come check out our amazing K-12 public schools. We, we hope, hope to see, see you soon! Good morning. Welcome back to First Talk with Hal Rowe on WHKY Talk Radio for the Greater Hickory Metro. So our Making Living Better segment. We're talking this morning with Marietta Burke. She is originally from the Catawba area, uh, resides right now in Newton with her husband, Joel. Children, Wesley, David, and Charlotte. She is the owner of Bella Vare, which is a shop in downtown Newton. I'm so glad that we've got young folks who are investing in the area and buying the building. Yeah. And you're there, and your husband's business is there as mm -hmm. well, right? It is, yes. So uh, you're invested, invested in uh, downtown mm -hmm. Town Newton. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the actual work that you do okay. in stained glass, because uh, from the information I received here, you were thinking initially about going into uh, the medical field. Is that correct? I did. I had originally gone to school and wanted to be a nurse anesthetist. And you, you went to uh, high school here in the area, right? I did. I went to Bunker Hill. Bunker Hill? Okay. Yeah. And then you went to what? UNC? UNC State? Charlotte, yes. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so then you decided nurse anesthetist was not going to be what you wanted to do. Oh, it's just, I mean, I have deep respect for the people in the medical field. Field. It is long hours, and the work they have to do is, I mean, it's very re rewarding, but it is hard work. Um, they really have to have the heart for it to be in that, and I just didn't see that I was as well suited for it as I should be. Well, if you don't mind yeah. me sharing this in the pre-interview uh, here that we had, yeah. you didn't like the fact that you'd go in and maybe some kids weren't going home with it, their parents. So I emotionally... Did. It's just it's too much. I did some internships in um, Wake Forest area and here at our local hospital through the area, um, AHEC, and, during high school, and you just saw some sad things. It was just... And I just could not... So you're tender-hearted. Yeah, you're sometimes, yeah this, this, I said, this, it's just too much. It's just too much, so yeah. architecture, you were thinking this maybe... Yeah. So I changed my major. <laughs> uh, as people do. Yeah. Well, that's why you have internships, and that's why you have schools. That's why you so know. you can go and say, no, this is not for me, but this may be. Exactly. Before you're so far in it, you're like, well, I'm a senior. I mean, I, mean, I can't change now. Right. So, um, yeah, so I changed to architecture. And, I mean, it was a rigorous program. And to get in, I mean, I had to give essays and pieces of work. And they wanted an example of my work. And you could do any medium. You could do dance. You could do painting. A lot of people did paintings and drawings that I saw when I was there for the interview process. Process. But what I brought was a stained glass window. It was the first piece I'd made out of lead, and it's probably 40 high by 30 wide, so it's a big piece. Wow. And, I mean, it took me oh, a good six, eight months to build this. <laughs> and, and this was just working on this piece when I was getting started. But, I mean, it's a beautiful piece, and I still have it to this day. But the, the instructor that interviewed me was super interested in that. And I don't think they'd never had anybody bring anything like that before. I was say, and probably was, blew them away. Yeah, they were really impressed with it. And they wanted to know, I mean, they talked to me over time because they wanted to find out more about this piece. So I said, well, stained glass got me into architecture school. <laughs> so, right. yeah. see, and I'm thinking uh, with architecture, and with stained glass, I'm thinking there's a lot of similarities there because you have to have the artistic side. Yeah. You have to have a vision. You have mm -hmm. to say, well, this is pretty and this is pleasing to the eye and yeah. aesthetically this is nice. 
Mm-hmm. But I also have to build it. You also have to build it and, and make and, sure it's going to work. And the <laughs> engineering part of it mm-hmm. uh, and the mathematics uh, yeah. part of it takes. So you got to be a right brain, left brain kind of person, I would think. You have to. To, to be uh, involved with architecture and also to be involved in, in stained glass, what I found out. Yeah, exactly. Building that piece and putting it together, it's a lot of things you don't know. And so people will come in and they'll say, well, so-and-so I know does stained glass. And I'll say, show me a picture of their work. You know? right. I'd love to see that. <laughs> so, um, But, you know, if you don't know how to support it, it's going to fall apart. It's, I mean, that's just how glass it is. Glass breaks. Yeah, glass breaks. You have to know how to repair it. I get repairs all the time. Do you really? Some of it, some of it you can tell it's from stress fractures from the way it's hung and not supported right and doesn't have the right frame on it and things like that. Right. So it's just little simple things that... If it would have been supported correctly to begin with, it would have been fine. But um, and you learned from somebody, obviously this person in uh, in, in Terrell, no, you in were Cornelius, living in Terrell, yeah, okay, in Cornelius, yeah. uh, who who had been doing this, oh, and who yeah. had the who had the experience, yeah, not just the VHS and not just the the books, but uh, they were able to say this is the way that you can make this work and this. So you kind exactly. of did an intern. Well, you didn't do an intern. Well, I, you, yeah. you, you did a class. Yeah, I did a class. But yeah. but, but uh, you were able to, to communicate with this person mm-hmm. and find out those things, yeah. but only that individual can, and, and you actually had it in your hands you, and you were feeling the yeah. glass. And is it lead? What kind of metal do you all it's, use? It's lead. Um, well, there's two different ways to make stained glass. It's copper foil where it's like tape and you tape around the edges and then you solder on top of that copper I think tape. I've seen that, it's right? like the Tiffany method. That's what they call it. Now, like, is that more of a beginner's method? Is, is that no, the, it's not. No, I mean, well, it, it's easier if, okay. if you, but it's the way you would make lamps. Like you wouldn't put lead came in a lamp because that wouldn't work. Um, okay. Like lead came is you put that in, but your cuts have to be super precise. Your pieces have to be right on. I mean, I usually cut out all my pieces first, but when I do a lead piece, I start to build it and cut the pieces as I go because if I've, I mean, I've cut out a whole window before and then half the pieces don't match up and then I'm, you know, <laughs> I have to redo it and this right. is wasted. But um, it, that has to be really precise. Um, but with a lead, key, lead came piece, that's when you wouldn't put on the outside of your house or something like that. That's, okay. uh, that's the Acceptable to weather and things like that. It's it's more enduring over time. But I mean, you see Tiffany pieces that are made with the copper foil method, and they're copper foil method. Now, mm-hmm. have you ever have actually held a Tiffany piece? Tiffany? No, but I've been to the Morse Museum of American Art in Winter Park, Florida, and they have all of these pieces on display. And I mean, they are gorgeous. Right. So I mean, lamps. You just you. I've taken pictures of it, but you can't see the depth and intensity of these colors, except if you're in person. I went in there with my, uh, there were six and about 10 or 11 at the time. And I mean, these boys are not particularly into stained glass, my two sons, but we walked in these rooms at this museum and we would, we would all three just stop and oh, be in all these, these beautiful pieces. Now, yeah. th- this is, uh, when, when you're doing this and you're doing this now, this is something that you're going to be doing hopefully for a while. Oh, so yeah. you continue to study, you continue mm-hmm. to seek out the other pieces, yeah. you continue to try to learn and to improve yeah. on your craft. And it's paying off. you got customers in Oregon. You've got yeah. people who are actually coming into your shop mm-hmm. from Florida. So this is something that is right here in our area mm-hmm. that people may not know about, but if they're stained glass fans, you've got a name, right? People are coming to see you. That's got to be pretty cool. It's, it is. It's, it's really cool. It's, I mean, I didn't expect this, and now I think, oh, I had a call from someone where, it was in the Midwest somewhere yesterday, and they wanted to have a consultation. I mean, this is completely completely custom piece from, you know, halfway across the country. So they put a lot of trust in me to make these pieces because a lot of people can't visualize what the colors will look like all together. So they trust me to do it and say, well, this will look good. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, mm-hmm. That really is. A, that's something that I don't think that people realize is right here in our own backyard. Now, you yeah. still do the retail, right? You still have some pieces there that I might be I might be able to go up and yes. pick up a camper. Yeah. Maybe yeah. somebody who's <laughs> buying a camper. Can yeah. I go up there and get a camper? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So yeah. You, you do that. That. Yeah. So you've got the retail end of it, mm-hmm. but but don't expect to come in and get something done tomorrow. No, this doesn't work like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I can tell you said that before. It yeah. doesn't work like that. Yeah. Um, sometimes people call me and they're like, well, I need a custom piece by this weekend. And I mean, if I don't have anything to do, I have done it before where somebody needed it for, for a special birthday. And I said, okay, now I'm working past, you know, be right. nice to me, but um, you know, um, we're doing this in a hurry. So they'll, but I normally cannot make something like that. Yeah. How do we get in touch with you? Stop by the store the best way? Stop by the store. Go to the website. The website is www.thebeautifulglass.com. Thebeautifulglass.com. Yes. Marianne Burke, so nice meeting you. So much to talk about. I feel like we barely scratched the surface, but thanks so much for coming by this morning. All right. Thank you.
Thanks for listening. To find more first-person stories from Catawba County, visit makinglivingbetter.com or tune in to themesh.tv each month for a new podcast. You've been listening to The Mesh, an online media network of shows and programs ranging from business to arts, sports to entertainment, music to community. All programs are available on the website as well as through iTunes and YouTube. Check us out online at themesh.tv. Discover other network shows and give us feedback on what you just heard.